Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and welcome to AP Biology Lab 6 walkthrough. This is on molecular biology. So it's the study of this material, deoxyribonucleic acid, that genetic material that makes life possible. Um, in this lab, there are actually two parts to it. There's the transformation part, where we can transform a bacteria, make it different using a plasmid, and then gel electrophoresis, how we can separate DNA, how we can digest it, break it into fragments, and then separate it according to the length of those fragments. And so let's get started. Um, the two things we'll do will be bacterial transformation. Transformation is when you're taking one bacteria, so let's draw an E. coli that looks like this, and here's another E. coli. And we're transforming this one by passing DNA between the two. In this case, we'll pass a little bit of DNA called a plasmid from one to another. Um, the plasmid we'll be using is something called P-Glow. So it's a way to actually get this bacteria to glow, fluorescent uh, glow under a black light. Second thing we'll do is gel electrophoresis. Gel electrophoresis is separating DNA according to its fragment length. So we're basically running DNA through a gel, it's almost like jello, uh, and then we're separating according to the length of those fragments. So those are the, the two things that we're doing. Um, the bacterial transformation we're doing is um, using a plasmid. This is the plasmid right here, it's called P-Glow. Uh, basically P-Glow uh, is a section of DNA, so in a bacteria you're, they're going to have their regular DNA, but they're also going to have these little bits called plasmids. Plasmids give them ability to do something. So a fertility plasmid would be an example, or uh, resistant plasmids. So that's going to be one that gives uh, bacteria antibiotic resistance. And so in this plasmid, it's been, it's been uh, engineered. In other words, it's been built by humans. On, on one bit of the plasmid, we're going to have the origin of replication. That's where it's copied. These ones are also going to have ampicillin resistance. So when we grow them on ampicillin, only the ones that have picked up the plasmid are going to grow. Here we've got the glowing fluorescent protein. This is extracted from a jellyfish. And then they also have a um, trigger, uh, arabinose sugar. So if you add arabinose sugar, they're going to make that glowing uh, fluorescent protein. If there's no arabinose, then it's not going to show up. And so basically what we'll do is we'll have four different types of bacteria. The bacteria we're using is... Um, e. coli, Escherichia coli. So basically we're going to take some of the E. coli and we're not going to give it the plasmid so it gets no DNA. We'll plate some of that on what's called Loria broth. That's just basically food for bacteria. And then we'll plate some of it on Loria broth with ampicillin. So since it has an antibiotic, it's not going to be able to grow. We'll then add the plasmid to some of the bacteria. We'll grow some of them on Loria broth and uh, ampicillin. Uh, some will be able to grow, those that pick up the plasmid, and then we're also going to have some of those with this trigger, this arabino sugar as well. And I'll show you what all those things are going to look like in just a second, but first let's discuss it. So basically what you get is a plasmid. A plasmid is a little bit of DNA. Um, we're going to add it to bacteria. And so the protocol for doing that basically entitles, um, entails putting them on ice, the bacteria. You then add a transforming uh, liquid. It's m calcium chloride is what it is. And that causes them to kind of loosen up their membrane and more likely take in that um, plasmid. We're also going to heat shock them. So they'll be on ice, then we'll heat shock them, and then some of them will pick it up. And when I do this in class, you know, it's two or three groups out of 20 or 30 groups. Um, we'll actually get it to transform. So there's a lot of chance to that. But if you get one bacteria to pick it up, you can get a colony of that, and then it's going to grow. And so basically, let's kind of talk through it. If bacteria doesn't pick up the DNA, what should it look like here? Well, we should have a lawn of bacteria. If ampicillin, we should have no growth here because unless they get that ampicillin resistance, they're not going to be able to grow. Um, LB ampicillin, the ones who get the plasmid, should be able to grow if they're transformed, and then these are going to be the only ones that actually glow. And so if we plate them on it, what we find is that the ones that actually didn't get the uh, plasmid, but they're on Lori Baroth, what you'll get is they'll cover the whole of the plate. You can kind of see that on here. The ones who we try to grow on ampicillin, the ampicillin is going to kill them. In other words, it's going to kill all of them so, since none of them picked it up. Likewise, on the ones who have the LB and the ampicillin, the ones that are transformed, we're going to see some colonies. So each of these colonies represent one bacteria that picked up the plasmid. It's able to make copies of itself and it's able to grow. So you can see not a ton of them were able to do that. But then uh, finally we get the really cool plate where we've got 
LB ampicillin, so all these bacteria were transformed, but we also have that arabinose sugar, so they're able to use that to produce this glowing protein, and so you get this fluorescence in the, in the bacteria. And so what do you need to understand? What a plasmid is, how it transformed bacteria, and then how that might be manifested in all the different growth on all the different plates. Second part of the lab is called gel electrophoresis. Gel electrophoresis is going to use a gel box that looks like this. There will actually be liquid in it. Um, and then you'll have a little fragment of jello. This is an agarose gel, so this is what it would look like. You're going to load up the DNA in these wells on one side, and then they're going to migrate across. They're going to be pulled, since they have a negative charge, they're going to be pulled towards the positive end. And so we let it run for a certain amount of time. Now if we were to let just DNA run, what you'd get is one fragment being pulled across. The smaller fragments of DNA are going to be able to make it farther. And so the smaller it is, the farther it's going to migrate. So we know that this one right here is a smaller fragment of DNA than this one is. But we also want to trim the DNA, and so we use something called a restriction enzyme. Restriction enzymes come from bacteria. Basically, bacteria are constantly being infected by viruses, so they use restriction enzymes to cut up all their DNA, remove the viral DNA, and then glue it back together again. And so basically, a restriction enzyme is going to cut between um, the nucleotides. So it's going to cut the DNA in specific points, but it's only going to cut the DNA when it has this specific reading frame right here, where it's G-A-A-T-T-C, and you can look that that reads it uh, in the opposite direction on the other side. So basically we can digest it using a restriction enzyme that's going to cut the DNA up into a, a little bit. If we were to use a different restriction enzyme, it would cut it up into smaller bits or different bits. And so if we were to run all of this through a gel, well this would be one big fragment, so this would not move very far through the gel. But this fragment way up here is very small, and so it would be migrating even farther. And then these ones would be, I don't know, somewhere in the middle. Something like that. So this would be how this DNA would separate. If we were to use a different restriction enzyme, we'd cut it up differently. Now you just you'd use micro amounts of DNA, so we use one of these micro pipetters to get tiny amounts of DNA. You then essentially load it in here and then it's pulled off to the other side. Let me kind of quickly talk about analysis. Another thing a lot of the time that we'll load whenever we're running a gel is something called a ladder or a DNA ladder. DNA ladder is going to be engineered, it's, it, it's sent to you, and each of those fragments is going to have a different length. So this would be a 200 base pair, 300 base pair, so this would probably be 400 base pair. So these are known quantities of DNA. So this would be the ladder on one side, and then you run your DNA in another lane. So we can see that this one right here we can kind of interpolate between these two that this is maybe 250 base pairs or 250 nucleotides between it. Or you could look over here, here's another uh, gel. So we loaded it right here in the wells. It's moved in this direction towards the positive end. You can see here's our ladder on this side. But you can see that we cut it with a different restriction enzyme. In this case, we're using a plasmid. So that's just that little section of DNA. We use different restriction enzymes. So it's the same DNA but uh, by using different restriction enzymes, they win a different amount. This one looks like it broke into two. This is maybe just one, and this might be, I don't know, two, something like that. And so basically, we can do analysis. We can compare that to the DNA ladder on the side, and we can figure it out. Um, that's it. So that's molecular biology. That's the gel electrophoresis uh, part, and I hope this all is helpful.